Okay, this is a conference room um, session, question and answer session. We had a question earlier on this particular forum post on reading momentum for trends in scalp and determining market conditions. This is a classic post. I love this post. Um, Daryl was explaining the bar timer in this as one of the entities of it. When the bar timer is tall, that means the bar took a long time to form. That means you're losing momentum. And you'll notice this happened right at the top of the change in direction. Um, he was showing how to do momentum scalps, which is 10 ticks over and over and over. And on this day, um, I happened to be doing momentum scalps and I was having really a bad time. And um, I kept getting in at the bottom of the scalp and then it would go the wrong way on me. So he put this post in to show us how to read all this stuff. And basically when you see the bar timer take a long time to form, that's a good indication that there's something, there's a change happening. Whether it be chop is coming or a change in direction, it may just be some temporary chop and it may go in the same direction. But at any rate, when you see the bar taking a long time to form like this bar is, that means some change is coming. Your momentum is going out the window, okay? And as you can see, this arrow shows where the bars kept taking less and less time until it got to where they were taking, you know, zero second bars. Or they weren't zero second, but um, very short bars. And then what happens? They start to get a little bit longer. So when they start to get a lo little longer, it tells you something is changing. And that's, you know, you were, the, the momentum was slowing down. As Daryl, it's not real clear on my chart here, but it says this is a warning shot. It's telling you there's something going on here. You had exceeding volume. The, it was rising the whole time you're going down. So this is fabulous. This is classic. It's your volume is rising. Your uh, timer is going slower and you're building up toward this deviation line. Now, when you get to this point, you see your, your volumes dropping off, your bar timers taking longer, and you're even coming up to the top of your deviation. This, this first line is showing you approximately 75% of the expected deviation the black line is showing you the one deviation so that you can look down here without having all your deviation bars on here or maybe you're zoomed in and can't see them all. Down here you can get them at a glance. You can see you're almost at the one deviation. So there's a really good chance that this thing is not going to continue for a lot longer. So in this case, um, after this, your volume is decreasing and your uh, bar timer is increasing a little bit. Now you've got a little bit more to go, but what's happening here then? It starts to increase and taking, as, you, as you, it turns direction, it's starting to increase the length again, which means it probably doesn't have a lot to go. Your volume's dropping off, so as it's going north, it's probably not going to continue to go. And anything can happen. We know that at any time. Anything can happen. This is telling you where the odds are going. The odds are going to be that it's not going to continue going up. It's not saying it definitely won't. It's saying the odds are it's not going to continue going up. And as it goes down, you lose a little bit of volume here. And then you, your bar timer is shorter. And um, then it doesn't, it, it just kind of stays even here. And then your bar timer is still taking a long time. It, you know, its changes are happening is what it's basically telling you. Your momentum is gone. That is the whole picture that it's painting. You're, you're reaching your, your deviation for the day here. 
chances are good it's not going to continue with whatever is going on. You, you've, this momentous, this drive's done. It's not going to continue. So that's your time to know that your, your quick scalping is probably temporarily done at the very least. This was before we had bad. This was a while ago. I mean, this is, I, I have this post memorized. I can close my eyes and I can see this in my sleep. And believe me, I have. Okay, does that answer your questions um, on this? Any other questions about how this is read? It basically tells you when your momentum is done. So you don't get in at the bottom. There's lots of great volume here. On this one, it's kind of fooling because you got volume. You've got your bar didn't take long to form. But look at you're at the top of your deviation. You're reaching that first line. And at that first line, you're about done. It's not a smart thing to take more trades. Okay, so I'm going to move this out of the way. So how do we combine that with bad and everything else? Okay, I have just put back the deviation on the bottom because I really do like that. I kind of have forgotten how much I like that. And um, I'm also, I put my bar timer and bar velocity back together in one, um, let me just check this real quick. Because I think I just lost my bar timer, I think it's yellow. Yep, velocity is taken over. Want that? Okay, I'll fix this later. Um, I guess for now I'll take it out because you can't see the bar timer. To me, the bar timer is more important than the velocity. Okay, so if you look at the bar timer, just a real quick thing to look at look at our bar timer and you'll see the bar timer takes longer at every reversal not every at nearly every reversal your bar timer increases well it didn't on that one it did on this it's a major reversal it your bar timer is increased here so whenever you have um, an increased bar timer that is always a watch out. Okay, it's telling you something is not right. And that's, um, I used to talk a lot about when I was doing my chop trades, I wanted to feel the rhythm of the market. That's why I put this bar timer back on because it tells you what I was watching for before. Um, I had kind of forgot and I took the bar timer off for a while there, but I was really paying attention to how the market was moving. If a bar took a long time, well, you put your bar timer back on and you can watch several markets a little bit easier because you've got something monitoring how long they're taking to form. And if a bar's taking a long time, I, I, I'm staying away from it. And so, um, just as an example, let's just pick this moment. I have not looked at it. I haven't been watching, I've been doing some testing, so I have no idea, another than that one that I marked up, um, on why I think it was this one, and why you might want to go, what would have given you a clue to get in here, I'll just go over that real quick. Um, you had the big bar timer, you had, if you look, can you guys see the crosshairs, or do you just see the arrow? I can't, I don't see what you see, so I don't know. You see a crosshair. Okay, good. That's what we want. Okay. You see this crosshair then, and you see when it came down here to make this, um, it came down and made a lower low than the previous one. Okay, so this was a lower low. Okay, and you can see that it maybe had a little bit more volume on this one, but not, if you just glance at, you know, not a lot and your your green volume on your VAD for the previous high wasn't much of anything. These real little volumes are telling you it's probably a lot of chop. And you got bunchy apexes to tell you that. So you don't have much. 
Anyway, it came down on this one and you definitely had a lower low with the same volume. Okay, when that happens, I'm looking every time to take the other direction. I mean, there was no question about that. This was a lower low on the same volume. And then you had a bar that took a long time to form. That's especially awesome right there. Love to see that. Um, that is, for me, the same thing as chop, because what it's doing is on the same bar, it's going up and down and up and down. And my seem to be froze. Okay, there we go. And it's, it's just probably on this bar. I don't know if it was just staying in one place. I don't know if it was going, you were gone for, 15, I was gone for 15 seconds. Okay, that doesn't surprise me. Something messed up here. Uh, and that was me. Uh, my internet or whatever computer okay so this bar took a long time to form and so that means it was playing on this bar for quite a while we don't I don't know how long I was not watching if it was going up and down steady if it was staying in one place I really don't know what it was doing but the fact that VAD tried to make a lower low on the same volume it made a little bit it could not go any further I like that, and I'm gonna I'm gonna head I'm going to take a long trade there if I get an entry. You had a nice sling here, right at the top of this P. It's a power line. When it it's it when it crosses it, that's a nice trade. I wouldn't expect it to be one of those huge runs because there was no level that it bounced off from. So I would not I would pretty much expect that it's. Mm, target unless you're looking at IR or yet you have a different reason to think something different just looking at this chart I would say it's not going to be a huge run because you want a big level and a lot of chop to go from a, a big for a big run it's not to say it always happens but usually um, that's what it takes is a big level for a big run so anyway it, it did a nice little uh, small trend nice scalp from about 47.53 up to, I would have been protecting at settlement myself, that's four, 15 to 20 ticks, somewhere in there. So that was, that was one I marked up and put in the room. Now let's just go ahead and see what this one, let's see what the market reading has telling is telling us here. It didn't give us the long bar to form, so we had no knowledge um, we had no warning from the bar timer when we reached this. We did reach a ZOI. They probably laid one down in here, I would guess, because it hasn't had any other time that it would have laid it down. That's from today, so it laid down a ZOI here. And once it left the ZOI, chances are it's going to go to the next ZOI, which was, I don't know if this was here or not. I, I really. I just marked them in later, so I don't know. But, um, okay, let's look at VAD. Going long. Okay, if we look at where it had come here, which would be this one, and then we look over at this one, you had less VAD volume, and it went higher. So if you have, if you made a higher high on less volume, that's telling you chances are good unless volume gets shoved in there fast, you probably aren't going anywhere. You had a cell zone, you had an old cell zone at the top here. You had, um, basically the VAD tells me everything right there. You had meeting volume, you didn't have any exceeding volume, maybe a little bit right at the very top, I can't really tell. But you had, uh, you could see visually that you had less volume in this attempt to go higher than in this one or this one. Well, certainly this one. So that's a divergence. That means you're going down. I mean, if it's so slight that you can't see it with your eyes, just without measuring it or looking to see what the numbers are, it's, it's not that significant, in my opinion. I want something that's going to show me. I want something that's going to jump up. 
arms and legs in the air and saying, hey, look at me, look at me. So there's something changing here. And there's a definite difference in the VAD volume here. And it made a higher high on less volume. I will take those every time to go down. The one thing that I don't like is there was, it didn't, it didn't have a long, it didn't take a while. There was no chop up here. And there's also no real level. So for me, I don't like those as well. I have a harder time sticking in them. Um, and you can see you had a lot of slings and elevators all the way down. To me, that's hard to sit through. You had a third bar sling and it would have been fabulous. So you had a nice entry. And if you follow the rules, you know, on the, the your stop is behind the, uh, on this down, it's behind the high of the bar. So you would have not been stopped out. You would have been going, you would have been fine. I have, personally, I have a hard time sitting through those. That's why I'm gonna try to start to put some binaries on because I can sit through binaries that, with that stuff, no problem. So if I had, say, a binary that was just barely out of the money, um, $40 risk, that's pretty much at the money, and I expect it to go down, um, I, I, if it's gonna go against me, I'm not so concerned as in a, you know, a 20 or 20 tick stop in this, in futures, that's hard for me to take. 200 bucks stop when, um, you can just, you know, you put a binary and you got about 40 bucks risk. I can sit in that. For a seat, okay. Um, if when it doesn't close up, it starts to go in reversal in that direction. Look for a seat's entry with a nice level and hide your stop behind it. Um, yeah, that's, that's a way to do it, but that's not the way my testing has shown it works for me. For example, for this third bar sling. The, C, the stops that are in C's are the stops that I personally have found work the best. If you find something better, go ahead and use them. That's what I use. And sometimes you can hide it behind a level, um, but in this case, there wasn't any level to hide it behind. And you see where it came up, this third bar sling, it was pretty much probably testing this previous high. They love to test these previous highs. They're a high for a reason. It's a level that the price got stuck at. And that is like a swing point. I love those previous highs or lows in a day. So, um, but yeah, in this case, the C's entry, in my opinion, would have been the third bar sling. And it, when it passed that third bar sling, I, I don't like the way it retraced. I have a hard time. I like the, I like the ones that are just your little stops, touchbacks. But there wasn't enough of a, a, a clean trend going through here. So I don't like them when they're not clean. Okay, Anthony, you had another question? No? to see if you're typing anything. Okay. So you are typing something. Um, for me, the bar timer, uh, the question is, is the bar timer and bar, bar velocity, use the bar timer instead. I'm going to put them both on the same, uh, in the same histogram down here, but I'm going to put the bar velocity with a smaller size bar, um, a smaller thickness bar so that the bar timer will overtake the velocity when they're both printing. And I just didn't want to take the time to do that right now. I'm going to do that later. Um, I, I'd like to see them both, but the bar timer is more important for me. Okay, so um, the bar, bar velocity tells you when, you know, you've got a fast trend, but generally once you see the bar velocity, you can't really do much about it. So I like the bar timer because it really gives you the, the heads up when something is changing. It doesn't necessarily mean your trend is changing, but it does mean you're losing your, 
momentum for sure. So that's, um, now do you see where the, how that worked in with the VAD there? You made a higher high on less VAD volume, so you're likely to go down. And here we showed that worked again. If it's, um, when, you, when you just don't have much, when, you, when you've got a choppy, I mean your apexes right there are telling you, you've got a bunch of choppy apexes, you've got nothing. So, um, you know, that right there, I, I don't, you know, I'm going to stay away from this stuff. I, I swear right here, they're probably just taking out stops. I mean, that, that is because you kept getting a little bit lower lows and lower lows, but you really weren't having much more for VAD volume. It wasn't increasing any amount to make any difference. It looks like it was kind of ice skating a little bit through here. I mean, if you've got the patience to sit through this, that's great. I mean, I can do it better if I'm in a binary with a real low risk, and so I'm going to try to do more of those. But but you can see where we had a low volume area here, according to our little histogram, our ice histogram, and it came down and it kept testing it and going back up into this low area. It's just kind of all these mini magnets and ZOIs are telling us you've got a big area of a mess today. I mean, that's really, in my opinion, when these, when you get so many ZOIs and mini magnets, the levels they're at become less important unless they're, you can see this one's thicker because it was hit several times. The same magnet was laid down several times, so I make them thicker. This ZOI was laid down several times, so I made it thicker. And that's what's important to me. I really, for the most part, those important ones matter, but other than that, I'm going to keep these on till the end of the day and after I don't, when there's so many, I haven't even added a bunch of them. I left them off. I'm not going to worry about them. I know this area is very congested, and so those absolute levels are not important. How can, you know, there's just too many levels to have any idea of what's going on. You know you've got chop in here, so stay out. It's that simple. When they keep laying down that many mini magnets and zones of interest, that basically tells you stay away. That's kind of like a long bar timer. You know, just don't, it's not worth trying to trade it. Um, yeah, the, I spent a lot of time practicing the VAD, practicing reading it. It is very, um, it takes a while to figure out. It's not just cut and dried. Learning to read it is something else, but there is some uh, easier stuff coming that will read it a little more automatically for you. It's just not here yet. We're working on it. So any other questions? And, and I mean, these two nice little runs were actually really pointed out. This one in particular with the bar timer, but this one was pretty pretty good chance of that going back down to settlement at the very least. Once it hits settlement and all this congestion in here, you know, man, we had a mess. For me, I'm staying out. I, there's no reason to to try and take these trades and have to sit through these big, huge um, stops. Um, no, thank you. And we know from forever, when you have a bunchy apex, it's just not a good thing. You got bunchy apexes, you've got little tiny VAD back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. You know, that's just classic apex. Stay out. When it crossed the power line going long at around 11, 12. Cross the power line right here. Um, it crossed both EMAs as well. Yeah, it did. I do not like the EMA crosses in this choppy stuff. I have seen that just bite. I, I, I don't take them off my chart because I kind of like for the touchbacks. It helps hold my eye in. But I am, for me, I'm about ready to take them both off. I, I don't really use them. Added 3,500 levels to your bat, and if it waffles in that level, you stay out. Interesting. Okay. That's a that's an interesting way to do it. 
I hadn't thought of that. Good thinking. the bad. Okay, there's the bad. Let's see. Let me add a, I don't even know how to add that. It had a label on you could add like you do the zones. You just add a line. Okay. Okay. I thought maybe it had a, um, so you just add a line at the 30, what, 3500 level. Oops. So you'd have to spread your chart out in order to see that. But just add a line down here. I'm just going to that's not quite right. And then you could add one, what, above there? And then you know when it's got a little bit of volume? Forget about it. That's a good idea. That's a really good idea. It's not, I mean, if you stretch your chart and then you can, these things become, you know, stretch that up and you can put it in there more exact. That's a really good idea. I thought maybe it had a capability in there that I missed. Okay, not so much. Let's see what Lou's looks like. He's got a screenshot here. Oh, my internet is really kind of being a dog today. Okay, there you go. There's your little line. You got one on top and one on the bottom. When it's in that 3500 zone, you stay out. Good work, Lou. That is, that's awesome. That would be a good way to mark if we're about where the choppy parts are as far as, um, like in here where you can see the breakouts. That's where I can tell when the breakouts are going to happen. That's what I watch for when the breakouts are going to happen. Um, because and I'm watching for the VAD to get bigger or smaller when it's as, about the same, it's not going to matter. So you could put a line there, and that would tell you at a glance as well. Um, you added 4,500 lines on YM, but you haven't traded that much. Okay, well, that's a good idea. Thank you. That's, that's an awesome idea. I like that. Um, we don't... Um, I would say you'd have to check the level and see what level works best. 3,500 is it seems to be a good level for um, NQ. I would think each level would have a little different. Um, go through and see where, just, you know, bank your chart, go back and, and see where your chop, your little chop levels are and see where they tend to land. See what your average is. That is really a good idea, Lou. Awesome. Awesome, awesome. Okay, any other questions? See, you never know what this, what stuff you're going to have happen in this room. And I didn't trade, so I'm a little more awake today. <laughs> I'm going to do some homework on that. I've already got some <laughs> homework I'm working on. I had my uh, test workspace up all day. So, yeah, we've got some really good stuff coming yet, but we've got so much to work with already. I mean, this is amazing. The other thing that um, I'm going to always be watching for are the levels. If it, if it stops in the middle of a level, I just don't like it. You're not going to go far. I mean, I want chop at a level, and when that takes off from chop at a level, you're going somewhere, usually. Except for today is a Fed day. I will say that. that this is not a normal day. We are looking at a really awful day. So if you're looking at this recording later on, you're, you know, hey, that doesn't make sense. It chopped right here at, at settlement, and it didn't go very far. Well, 
you're right because it was really it did end up going quite a ways but it was choppy to get there and it was awful and when it was done bar timer told us it was likely done but I could sit through that in a binary maybe but man I just can't sit through that stuff if you can my hats off to you so any other questions this has been a crappy day I didn't even look at it I was in test mode this morning except for a binary before things even opened any other questions So Anthony, you feel better about reading the VAD and and not it, it's it's about divergence, but there's a couple different ways to read divergence, and it does take practice. And you don't want to take a trade just because VAD shows you. You really want to have the bigger picture. Yeah, I mean, it took me a lot of practice to read it. A lot of practice on a lot of marked up charts. I probably did more marked up charts with questions trying to learn VAD than I have in a while. <laughs> okay, so I think we're done and I can get, I am recording if it held then I'll get the recording up if we actually I'll test the volume and see if it worked so we're good okay